Good morning to everyone. My name is Richmond Owusu, and I am privileged to be sharing the Word of God with all of us this morning. I want to thank the leadership for giving me this privilege. Thank you, Pastor Hector, for allowing me to share the Word of God to all of us. And I know that God is going to use this Word to bless all of us and encourage all of us. Amen. If you have been following or if you have been in the home church for a while, you will realize that we've been dealing with a series and the title is Life in the Kingdom. Tell your neighbor, Life in the Kingdom. <clears throat> you see, uh, th this series has blessed me a lot. And if this is your first time hearing my message, I would encourage you, if you have the chance, you can go back to the YouTube channel and and watch the subsequent messages as well. And the reason why we do a series is so that we can get a thorough understanding of the Word of God. And so I want to encourage all of us to do that. Now, the kingdom message is about Jesus. When we talk about the kingdom of God, we are talking about the person of Jesus Christ. Now, it is very important for us to understand that our God himself is a king. Now, the reason why Jesus came to this world was not to establish a kingdom. He came to restore a kingdom. Because when he created Adam in the Garden of Eden, the Bible says in, in the book of Genesis that he gave Adam dominion. Say dominion. Yeah. And that dominion was kingdom. He gave Adam the power, the authority. And now Satan comes and takes the kingdom away from Adam. That is why when Jesus came, the devil took Jesus to the top of the mountain and said, all these kingdoms of the world belongs to me. If you can bow, I will give those kingdoms to you. You see? But Jesus had to take the kingdom from the devil. That is why he went to the cross. And so now the kingdom... It's what we have as children of God. And uh, that's what we've been, we've been talking about the, the, for the past few weeks. And so when we talk about the, about the kingdom, we are talking about the person of Jesus. But this morning, my assignment is simple. I'm going to share about our authority in the kingdom of God. Because when we are born again, we are born into a kingdom. And so we have authority in that kingdom. And this morning, we are not just going to talk about authority. We are also going to talk about how we can exercise that authority that God has deposited in us as kingdom citizens. Now, the greatest gift that Jesus brought was not religion, but a kingdom. The greatest message that Jesus delivered was not about religion. It was about kingdom. Now, the, greater, the greatest need of mankind is not religion. It is what? Kingdom. Now, the most stable kingdom on earth is the kingdom of God. There are so many kingdoms in this world, but the most stable of all of them is the kingdom of God. And we have power in that kingdom. Now, Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 to 14, the Bible said he has delivered us from the power of darkness and has conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. So the writer was telling, is telling us that before we were born again, we were under the influence of the kingdom of darkness. Now, once you become a child of God, or once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. And so we are no longer under the kingdom of darkness. Now, what happened, the, he, the, uh, the writer Paul uses the word redemption, now, this word, in, in when, you, when you study the Greek lexicon, there is, there is something called the coin Greek, 
And the, the, the word that was used is agorazo, the word redemption. Agorazo means a place of market. So we were slaves in a place of market. We were the slaves of the devil in the marketplace of sin. But Jesus, through his precious blood, came to the play or the marketplace of sin and purchased us with his blood. And so we are no longer under the kingdom of darkness. That is the first point I want us to understand once we are talking about authority in Christ as kingdom citizens. Now, you will also realize that most of the people that God used in the scriptures spoke about the kingdom of God. Number one is John the Baptist. What message did John the Baptist preach? Luke 16, 16. The law and the prophet were until John. Since then, the kingdom of God has been preached and everyone is pressing into it. So before John, nobody was talking about the kingdom. But when it was the era of John, he started preaching about the kingdom of God. That is to tell us how important this message is. In fact, this is one of the messages that is hardly taught in contemporary churches because we, we hardly hear about you know, the kingdom and how we can take authority as kingdom citizens and enforce our dominion as children of God. Again, what message did Philip preach? Acts chapter 8, verse 12. But when they believed Philip, as he preached the things concerning what? The kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. So Philip also preached about the kingdom of God. So when the home church is doing a series about the kingdom, it should tell us how important the kingdom is to us as children of God. Again, what message did Paul preach? Acts 19 verse 8. And when he went into the synagogue and spoke, and he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of what? The kingdom of God. So John the Baptist preached about the kingdom. Philip preached about the kingdom. Paul also preached about the kingdom. Pastor Randall preached about the kingdom. <laughs> Pastor Hector is preaching about the kingdom. You are also going to preach about the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, in John chapter 3, verse 3, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, I want you to take a look at this verse carefully. He said, unless one is born again, he cannot do what? See. Which stands to reason that when one is born again, he has what? Seen the kingdom. Hallelujah. So unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom. So if you are born again, you are already in the kingdom. You are in the kingdom of God. Amen. So Nicodemus was a religious leader. Let's say he was a pastor during his time, but he went to Jesus secretly and he needed to hear something. And Jesus spoke to him about the kingdom, that you have to be born again to enter this kingdom that I've been preaching all this while. But it is not enough for us to also know that we are in a new kingdom. It is even more important for us to understand the power and the authority that God has vested in us as children of God. We have power in the kingdom. And I'll be sharing a few things as I, as I go along. John chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as did receive and welcome him. I love this translation. It's either the, the person translation. The actually, this is the amplified version. He said, but as many as receive and welcome him, he gave them the authority, which is power, privilege, right to become children of God. That is to those who believe in, that is adhere to, trust in, and rely on his name. So as many as believe in Jesus, 
He has given us the authority. And the scripture is giving us other words for authority. Power. You have privilege. You have the right to become a child of God. So as you are seated here right now, it doesn't matter your physical, geographical location. You may even be watching us in a very small village somewhere. But that is not your real location as a child of God. The Bible says we are seated together with Christ in the where heavenly places far above all principalities and powers and dominion. So he is not talking about a physical geographical location. He is talking about a place of authority. Now, I used to think that the Bible said that Jesus is at the right hand of God. So I always created a mental picture like, okay, Jesus would be seated and then on his right hand. But I actually saw that the, the scripture, that scripture doesn't talk about the right hand side. There is difference between the right hand side of God and the right hand of God. Now, when we talk about the right hand, if I say somebody is my right hand man, he is somebody that I have invested power into. So Jesus is at the right hand of God, means Jesus is at the place of what? Power and authority. And the Bible says, you are in Christ. So if you are in Christ, where are you also seated? Why in the right hand of God. Place of power. You are not only in San Jose. Physically speaking, you may be living in San Jose, but spiritually, that is your location. The right hand of God. Somebody say, I have power. I have, power. I have, authority. I have authority. This is a power service. So let's, let's prove to the devil that God has given us power. Amen? Amen. You can't talk about power and be so gentle. I have power. <laughs> you know, I, I always say when you come to Africa, where I come from, the way we pray, if I try to bring that prayer to the home church, I'm not sure Pastor Randa will allow me to come and preach here. And I always tell my friends jokingly, I always say African demons are so wild and dangerous. So you can't be gentle with them. But in America, the demons, they eat sandwich, <laughs> salad, and so they are very gentle and cool, calm and collected. <laughs> Amen. So when we are talking about power, we need to demonstrate that power. It's, it's a demonstration. Hallelujah. So every believer has authority. Jesus has given us authority to walk on top of situations. He has given us the power. Do you remember the story in the Bible where Peter wanted to walk on water and get to Jesus Christ? And the Bible said as soon as Peter started walking on the water, he started sinking. Now let me show you something. That, that scripture is very long, otherwise I would have read it. Matthew 14, 22 to 31. Now Jesus was walking on top of the very situation that the disciples were scared of. Now Peter said to Jesus, would you bid me to come to you? In other words, Peter was asking Jesus permission to come to him. And then Jesus said, come to me, Peter. Now, did you realize that Jesus didn't hold Peter's hand? Jesus could have held Peter's hand and held him and, and hold him to walk on the water. But Jesus told Peter to come to him. In other words, when Jesus gives us the authority and the power, he wants us to step out with that power that he has given us. So Peter, Jesus gave him the authority. He gave him the authorization to come to him. He started walking on the water. Peter started breaking several laws of science. He started breaking the law of density. He started walking on the water because Jesus gave him authorization. But the moment he lost focus on Jesus, he started to sink. Listen, when God has given you authority, all we need to do is to focus on the authority and nothing else. If we can focus on the power that God has put in us, we will walk on top of our situations. How many of us are ready to walk on top of our situations? Jesus didn't pick Peter up. He made him walk. 
Jesus said, come. And Peter took the authority. He took the steps. Peter requested for the authority to come to Jesus. And Jesus gave him that authorization. Come. Now, Jesus, in the same way, he has given each and every one of us power, authority to come to him, to go into the world, and to demonstrate his power. And I love how Pastor George, last week, he shared about, you know, the, the, the demonstration of the power of God and how we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit and all that. That is so, so essential. Now, look at what the scripture says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. Jesus gathered his 12 disciples, and I love this version. He imparted to them authority to cast out demons and to heal every sickness and every disease. Now, he is not referring to the disciples now. He is referring to us as children of God. He has imparted. In other words, once you become, you know, it's like laying hands on somebody and imparting something to someone. That is what happened when we become born again. There has been an impartation. Now, this impartation, Jesus didn't lay his hands on you. It was imputed on you. And so you have the authority as a child of God. You are, I want you to look at the one next to you and tell the person, I am an authorized dealer of the power of God. Oh, are you really sure you are an authorized dealer? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, we're going to get out of this church, and we are going to prove to the kingdom of darkness that we are authorized dealers of the kingdom of God or the power of God. Hallelujah. Now, if you want to demonstrate the authority that God has given you, you may not get the opportunity to maybe do that or exercise that in the church. But there is a lot of privileges for us out there to exercise and demonstrate our power. And that is what the scripture is talking about. He imparted to them the power and the authority. Matthew chapter 16 verse 19. And that is not all. In fact, when I was preparing the message, I was comparing different versions. That's why you are seeing some of these words may be very new. I, was, I usually go with the Passion Translation or the, the, the Message Translation and then the Amplified and King James. Now look at this version. He says, and that is not all, which means Jesus was talking about something previously. But he said, that is not all. You will have complete and free access to God's kingdom. Now, a little background. This was when Peter was able to reveal who Jesus was. When Jesus asked, who do men say I am? Now, Jesus said, and that is not all. You have complete and free access to God's kingdom. Keys to open any and every door. Tell your neighbor, I have the keys. To open every and any door. No more barriers between heaven and earth. Earth and heaven. And he says, a yes on earth is a yes in heaven. Come on, let's preach together. A yes on earth and no on earth is a no in heaven. Now, in King James, he said, you, in King James, he said, uh, whatever, when Peter was able to, Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say I am? And Peter said, you are Christ, the son of the living God. And then Jesus says, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But I give you the keys of the kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth shall be loose. Now, this is what the scripture is talking about. Now, here, Jesus was talking about keys. Now, this key that he's talking about, he's te telling Peter that I've given you the key to the kingdom. In other words, one of the keys that we have as children of God is the authority. So I've given you authority. Now, what are the keys that Jesus was referring to? Number one, he was referring to authority of the believer. Number two, he was talking about access. We have access. We have access to, to do whatever God has commissioned us to do. We have ownership. We have control. We have power. 
We have freedom. We have right. We have privilege. We have dominion as a child of God. In fact, it, it, is, it is something that God has wired in our DNA when we became born again. You, we, don't, we don't go around looking for authority. We have it. It's on our inside already. All we got to do is to step out in faith and exercise that power. Step out in faith. Whenever a situation arises, we need to stand and declare and tell the devil, devil, not this time. Because I have the power of God. I have the authority of God. When the devil gives you a bad dream and he tells you you are going to die, what do you do when you wake up? You say, devil, I have power. According to the scriptures, he says, I shall not die, but I will live and declare the words of the Lord. You release the power on the devil. You release the power. It is in you already. Now, I've been seeing, you know, you see people, especially where I come from, people go around looking for power as children of God. We go around looking for power, consulting pastors and men of God and other people for power. No, it's on your inside. Jesus said, according to the power that worketh in you, the power is in you already. All you got to do is to, is to step out. And you see, one of the things I've seen about the authority of the believer is that if you don't step out in faith and exercise your authority, the devil is always going to beat you. You have to exercise that faith. You have to exercise that faith. That neighbor in your community, that he thinks nothing can happen to him, like, like God's power is too small for him. You got to exercise that faith one day and go out and step out in faith and share the word of God with him or her. And it will marvel you what the Holy Spirit can do through you. So he said, I've given you the keys to open every and any door. Now, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 6, the Bible said, God has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Now, the question now is, why didn't God choose any concept other than kingdom? Why didn't God choose the concept of governor? Why didn't God choose the concept of a president? Why didn't God choose the concept of a mayor, prime minister, congressman? The reason is, and God chose kingdom. And the scripture says he has made us kings in that kingdom. Now, one reason I wrote, I said the, the reason why we are, God chose king or kingdom is because the ultimate source of authority is in a kingdom. The ultimate source of authority is in a kingdom. The beginning and the end of the beginning and the end is in a kingdom. So when Jesus is the king of kings, in other words, he is the beginning and the end of that kingdom. And the king's authority is absolute. A king's authority is absolute. When a, king's, when a king orders, it's, it's absolute. A king cannot be voted out of power. So if God has made us priests and kings, it means we have absolute power. He's given us the authority. It's perpetual. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4. He says, for where the word of a king is, there is what? Authority and power. And do you believe you are a king? Or you are a queen? Oh, you sound like you don't believe it. Do you believe you are a king? Maybe I should go back to that scripture. Let me show you that scripture again. Let's read it together. Revelation chapter 1 verse 6. Let's go. made us kings kings hallelujah you are a king you are a queen and so you have the power and the authority you may not be dressed right now like a king but that is who you are that is your identity that is who god has made you to be 
You have the power on your inside. When a king decrees, he has decreed. And that is the power that God has vested in us as children of God. The question this morning is, are we ready to exercise our authority as children of God? Are we ready to go out and preach the gospel in power and in authority? Are we ready to pray and begin to intercede for the sick? Are we ready to begin to command demons and all kinds of sicknesses from people to live? Are we ready? The reason, the only reason, and you see, you cannot have authority if you are not under authority. And so if you are not under the authority of Jesus, you cannot exercise the authority that we are talking about. That is why the only requirement for you to have access to this authority is to be born again. We were not born again to suffer again. Tell your neighbor. We were born again with power. With power. Hallelujah. You have the power. That is how God has made us. And I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. I want to, I want to encourage you. I feel like God sent me this morning to, to jack up your faith in him. And to tell you that whatever way you are feeling that he is leading you, he is the one. You see, one of the barriers of authority is fear. Anytime God sends you on an errand, he makes provision for you. He gives you the necessary tools that you need to embark on that vision. So if God has called us as children of God, he's given us all the things that we need. We have authority, we have power, we have privilege. Hallelujah. You see, why didn't God choose the... Why, uh, the Bible says that we are citizens of the kingdom of God. He has made us citizens, right? Now, the reason why we are... We are Jesus never thought about membership. But Jesus said we are citizens. Hallelujah. Now, the reason why you are a citizen... Is because citizens have certain authority, privileges, and rights. Now, before I became a U.S. citizen, I was in the home church, I think about two years ago. Now, there were certain things I couldn't do as a green card holder. Number one, I didn't have the right to cast my vote. But the moment you become a citizen of the United States, Certain authority and certain rights are vested in you. So if you are a citizen of the kingdom of God, you have certain power, certain authority, and certain right that God has given you compared to somebody who is outside the kingdom of God who is not born again. That is what we are talking about this morning. And I, I feel God is saying that I have a lot to do with my people. I have so much to do with them. All I require is for them to step out in faith and just believe me. The Lord said there are some of us, we, we try to exercise our authority, but we doubt it. What if? What if? The Lord said we need to kill the what if mentality. What if I pray and it doesn't work? What if you pray and it also works? Pray first. The Bible talks about the workings of miracles. Look at the word, working. So you got to work it out. Tell your neighbor, work it out. If you pray and it didn't work, pray again. You got to work it out until it works. Hallelujah. I feel like there are people here who God is saying that I have called you. I, I want you to, to demonstrate my power. I want to use you. But you are doubting. Fear has, has held you. But I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus. Anyone under the sound of my voice that God is calling you to do something for him and fear has taken hold of you. We come against any spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. The Bible said that the, when, when, when the, the, the people saw the boldness of the disciples, they realized they have been with Jesus. Now, anytime a man is with Jesus, something rubs on you. You, 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 there, there is something that they said when the people saw, they saw the boldness, they saw the authority with which the disciples were carrying themselves, they realized they had been with Jesus. You can't be with Jesus and not have authority. Jesus said, All power, all power in heaven and on earth 
has been given unto me. He didn't say some powers have been given unto me. He said all. And the word all in, 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 in the Greek means all. Hallelujah. All means all. All power has been given unto me. And he said that same power, I delegate that unto you. Now, do you know what that means? When, when we want to exercise our authority, number one, we exercise our authority in the name of Jesus. So I say, in the name of Jesus, you foul spirit, come out of him. Now, you got to demonstrate that with power and authority. Let's say, in the name of Jesus, you foul spirit, come out of him. You got to demonstrate that you have command and authority using the name of Jesus. Now, when you preach, thank you, when you preach in the name of Jesus, what it means you are saying, by the authority of Jesus. When you say in the name of Jesus, it's, it's as though Jesus himself is present. Now, when I am doing something in the name of, of, of somebody, or let's say Pastor Hector gives me the authority to do something in his name, wherever I go, whoever sees me doesn't see me, he sees Hector. Why? Because I am in his name. In the same way, when you pray and exercise your authority in the name of Jesus, what you are saying is, by the authority of Jesus. Yes. Devil, it's not me. Because if it's you, the devil is not going to be scared of you. But once you say, in the name of Jesus, by the authority Jesus has given me, I command you sickness, leave my body. This migraine, I command you, not in my name, not in my power, but by the authority of Jesus. The, you see, one time the Bible said, Jesus saw the wind, and then he rebuked the wind. Now, I was reading that scripture, and I was thinking, why would Jesus rebuke wind? Because in my little English understanding, I know the word rebuke, we rebuke human beings. What that means is that Jesus did not only see wind. There was something behind the wind. There was a principality causing that. So he had to rebuke it by the authority that God has vested in him. In the same way as children of God, we go in his name by his authority. And when the devil sees that, he knows that it is not about you, but it's about him. And sometimes when you are praying for somebody, the devil may remind you of your past sins and tell you that, oh, don't you remember you, you did this in the past? You say, devil, get out of this place. I'm doing this by the authority of Jesus. It's not me. Because if it's us, then we're not going to succeed. Amen? So it's by his authority, by his power. Another medium by which God has given us to exercise our authority is by his blood. Say, by his blood. By the blood of Jesus. By the power of the blood of Jesus. That is where we have authority. And so when we take communion, it's not just a ritual. It's not just a religious thing we do every month. It has a spiritual significance. We carry the authority of Jesus Christ. Do you remember Moses when he was leading the children of Israel? He had a rod. Now, do you know what that rod symbolized? That rod symbolized authority. So anytime Moses will lift up the rod, I know something spectacular is about to happen. He lifted up the rod and he pointed it to the water and he parted into two. Authority. Now, you may not, that does not also suggest go and look for a physical rod. Because those were the shadows, but we have the substance. Hallelujah. So when Jesus went on the cross, we don't need those elements anymore. He lives on our inside. We become his permanent abode. Jesus doesn't stay in you and go on vacation. No, he lives in you forever. He's on your inside. And sometimes you don't even feel it, whether he is there. How many of us attest to that? Sometimes you don't feel like even you have God's presence with you. You don't, you don't feel anything. And even when you are preaching, sometimes 
you could feel nothing about the anointing of God. Now, that does not mean that he is not there. Because it is not about feelings. It is about knowing. Tell your neighbor that. It is not about feelings. Hallelujah. Now, I, I, because of time, I'm going to end here. I, I want us to use about three minutes to do something. We are going to exercise, and I'll call the worship team up. We are going to exercise our authority. Hallelujah. How many of us are ready to exercise our authority? Now, I want you to, 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 to if you can, please be on your feet for a moment. Um, I'm ending right now. I want you to, to, te to, to turn next to somebody and begin to make a declaration over them that they have the authority, they have the power to go out and to do exploit. God has empowered them. God has empowered them. Begin to make that declaration. Say, my brother, you have the power. God has commissioned you. God has commissioned you. God has authorized you. Yes. Amen. And then the last thing we're going to do. The last thing we're going to do. Can you, can you play something please? The last thing you're going to do. You're going to declare to the devil right now. You're going to shout and declare. Everything you are going through. You are going to demonstrate that power to the devil. I want you to speak to every situation. Say, you sickness, come out of my body. You unclean thoughts, I command you out in the name of Jesus. Command that situation right now. Say, by the authority of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I want you to repeat this way. Say, Lord Jesus, by the authority in the kingdom of God, I leave this service as a child with authority. I go out to the world and demonstrate your power. In my family, I will demonstrate your power. Say, devil, not again. Not at this time. I have power. I have the authority of God. In the name of Jesus. Give the Lord your loudest amen.